My name is Alexis Ayala, and I got next. Yeah. You next up and you ain't been on sports like talk like what are you doing? <laughs> hey, you better hit him up. Look, you breaking next and you up next. Keep the coins on hard. Rock the star on the big scene. Make them know who you are. You don't break a sweat. Don't set up for less. They put you through that test. Your resume that flesh. Who got next? Who got next? SLT, ready say go. Who got next? Who got next? Living my dreams and are your goals. Who got next? Who got next? You can ask B. Jones or head coach. Who got next? Who got next? Yes, LT Nation. What it do, fam? Welcome back to another fire episode of Sports Life Talks. You got next a platform that gives exposure to the voices of tomorrow that's right it is season four the year of the mamba and kt and i we are grinding hard i'm telling y'all we are 10 toes down going coast to coast and we are finding rising superstars in our communities individuals who are doing big things and accomplishing big dreams and today oh my goodness Bang, bang, we got her, ladies and gentlemen. She is one of the dopest sports broadcasters, sideline reporters, color commentators, TV analysis. She is a do-it-all type of personality, stalking the sidelines of games all over this country, telling the amazing stories of, of, of amazing athletes, ladies and gentlemen. She's representing the Bucks, the Red Wings, the Broncos of Western Michigan, coming out of ESP. NBSN by Bally Sports Network. Y'all make some noise for the pride of Flint, Michigan. Ayala will make y'all holler. Let's make some noise for Alexis Ayala. <laughs> Hey, well, Alexis, you, had you, ready. you had the noise. I was ready to make noise for myself, but that was great. Hey, they they all gonna make noise when they when they get to see this one. How you doing today, Big Lexi? Big Lexi's always doing good, having a good time. Excited to be on here. Hey, we excited to have you. Uh, you know, you you are uh, following in the path of some amazing sports analysts. I, I wish I could go through everybody that have been on the show, but I tell you this: from the Andrea Carters to the Steffi Sorison, those individuals that have come on, you got next. They went on to do amazing things. So y'all buckle up, cause she is going to be a monster. She's already taking over the nation. If this is your first time watching SLT, you got next. I am your host, the Mouth of the South. The B. Jones, the OG, all things Louisiana. We'll put your L's up. Mr. Yeet is in the building, and I'm riding alongside my brother from another mother. The other side of the logo, the choir storm. Shh. All facts, no cap. The head coach, KT. Kev, how you feeling today, man? B. Jones, if people could have been backstage with us just now, I'm right now. I'm planning on this new show. You know, the three of us, we're gonna be doing talking sports. So that's where I'm going with this, B. Jones. But to answer your question, man, I'm feeling great. Let's turn up, man. Let's go. Hey, well, KT, man, we we gotta <laughs> we gotta give you some uh, we gotta give you some additional love, brother. You uh, you you went out and got us an amazing talent today. I don't know. I don't know how KT goes out and does what he does, but man, you you deserve. A round of applause, man. I'm, I'm gonna tell you, B, I'm gonna tell you what happens. What happens is people. I think she liked one of the posts that we did. You, you went shocked, and, and as soon as she liked that, I thought, oh, you just messed up. Let's see, I'm gonna get you. So, look at it. out of here, man. So we appreciate it, man. Let's go. All right, Big Lexi. Well, this is the first part of the show. We call it the moment of truth. We kick this show off with our version of two truths and a lie. All right. So before the show, ladies and gentlemen, Lexi decided on three facts that she was gonna try to trick up KT and I with. The only deal is, is one of those facts is not the truth, as you can tell from the the title of the game, Kevin and I will have exactly 60 seconds to work together as a team, deliberate, and try to figure out, uncover the untruth. KT, how, how, how good a research did you do on this one, man? How, 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 how strong do you feel on this one? We're going to get this one, B. Jones. I, I feel, I feel British. I'm, I'm feeling yeah. bullish, too. I'm feeling bullish as well. All right, we, we need, uh, what, what's the point guard that M Mateen Cleaves? We, we need, we need, uh, we need some love out of the Michigan State. <laughs> 
<laughs> we need we need that championship run team to show us some Tom Izzo kind of spirit right now. All right, Alexi, let's get it. Let's give us your three facts. All right. You know, I'm not good at lying, so I feel like I will be caught easily. Good, I'm good. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. Okay, number one. Fact number one. I dropped 40 points in a basketball game. Haven't had a 50, but got 40. Okay, fact number two. I'm the oldest of six siblings. A lot of them. All right. And then fact number three. I've called 20 games in six days before. I believe, I I believe the last one. I believe the last one and the first one. No, I think the sibling thing is a total lie, B. Jones. I think it is, too. I don't think she got – I think she probably got a lot of siblings, but six of them? But here's the thing, though, B. Jones. She said that the most she scored is 40, right? And, you know, we right. fall for this one every time, too. She made we, – We got – Most of 99. So, which one you go uh, – Kevin, I, I don't think she got that many siblings, bro. Because I don't remember seeing that many siblings – I, 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 I went Look, deep, and I ain't see that many siblings you know Let's go with that one, B. Jones. We're going to go with that one. All right, Alexi, we're we, 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 we going to go with the fact that you don't have five siblings and you're the oldest of six. I got you guys. I got you guys. Oh. I, I have – they're they're in different households. You know the family dynamics, but there's six of them. And I'm the oldest. Oh, so which one was the lie? I've only gotten up to 35 points. Uh, I never even hit 40. I never uh, – 40. Kevin, how do we do every time they say the points thing? See, you too much of a dog, Lexi. I see. I, I watched your highlights on the sideline. I just knew you was a dog. I said, "She, hey, forty is nothing for her. Forty would have been nothing for her. Kevin." I cannot believe we lost another. I literally one. just said that she probably had like thirty nine points. You said the, it. The point guarding me. The point guarding me. I'm. I'm assisting. <sighs> I'm assisting first. So we. Never <sighs> what 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 a tragedy. What a tragedy. <laughs> All right, here we go, Lexi. Let's get this thing kicked off. If you are listening, if you're riding your car, or if you're watching this on YouTube, we all got to take our right hands. Come on, y'all. Let's lift them up. Let's lift them up and get, get tra- tambourine fingers. We take that right hand. Reach over your left shoulder. Grab that seatbelt and strap up. Click, clack. It is time to go to work. Let's turn up the energy. Turn up the noise. This is our part of the show. We're going to call on all of y'all who are watching right now. We need y'all to bless the program. That's right. We need you to do three tremendously big things. We call it the SLT Trinity. We need you to smash that subscribe button and become a part of our network. Number two, we need you to hit that like button as many times as as Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg will allow you to hit it. Matter of fact, create another the email address jump back in this thing and hit that like again so this show will just bubble all the way up to the top and last but not least sharon is caring and y'all know what that means that means you got to give this show to as many people as you can possibly think about because one it's an amazing show this is an amazing guest and two they will thank you for it. and three you gonna look back in five years and go say, "Oh, I saw, I saw when she when she was when she was breaking breaking barriers and she came on that talk show." You gonna remember this day? I promise you that. Hey, Lexi, is is Flint, Michigan gonna hold us down? Is is is, is, is Michigan State gonna hold? Is is all the all your people that rock with you go show sports life talk some love? They better, they better. I'll I'll be heard if not, but you know, the haters at least will be peeking in, so we know they'll be there. All right, well, y'all know what to do. Let's do it like we true to it on the count of three. Make some noise for your boys. One, two, three. Boo! Yeah, it's a party. It's a party. It's a party. I love that part of the show, KT. That's my favorite part because we got all you new family members who are rocking with us. And when KT and I, we call you family, we we mean that. We don't do fans. We don't do followers around Sports Life Talk. We only do family. Hey, Lexi, what is your favorite emoji that you're using right now? I like the one that, that's cross-eyed with the tongue out. All right, so cross eye with the tongue out emoji, it is. So if you did any of those three things, we don't care whichever it is. Drop us the cross eye emoji with the tongue out in the chat just so we can recognize you and we can reach out to you. What we going to tell them, KT? Thank you. Thank you. All right, y'all, let's make some noise. Let's get this party going. Doom, doom. Kevin, I hear that, that you know, that defense beat every time we, we get to this part of the show. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Sports Life Talks initiation. Where's that defensive music in the moment of truth, B. Jones? That's what we need. I don't know. Not now. I don't need it now. We already in loss and you want to play defense. 
All right, to initiate you into the SLT family, you got to give us your top five music artists. Okay. I've thought about this, and you know, I had to go back to look at my 2023 most played, but I have to add one in that wasn't in there. Okay, so my most played was Koi Ray was number one. She had a new album come out. In love with her, she talks her stuff. That's top down music. That's oh, female empowerment, lover. Kanye's number two. Then we got Drake at three. We got Nicki at four. Beyonce was at five, but. I felt so bad that Amy Winehouse didn't make it in there. She's my all-time <laughs> favorite artist, so I just gotta throw her in. We have six. Hey, rest in peace, Amy Winehouse. She was super to dope. Take me back to rehab. I and said, I say, no, no, no. 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 <laughs> yeah. Hey, she was dope. So good. Right. Yeah, she so was. Good. All right, so we like to rank everybody's top five. Well, in the highest you can get is ten. But B. Okay. Jones with a top five like that, man, I can't get over anything less than fifteen. <laughs> I love that for me. I love that yeah, for okay. me. Let's give her. I'm feeling 20 ish, B. Jones. Let's go 20. Let's go 20. Hey, still going. <laughs> nice. Amy Winehouse, I forgot all about her, man. She was. Hey, she, me, real. but I, I, get, I get to say, we share too. I got Drake and Kanye. Oh, so hey. yeah, good, yeah. I, I, now, do you like yeah. new, new Kanye stuff? Do you like the new Kanye stuff? I, I'll bop to new Kanye, old Kanye, but I love old Kanye. I love old Kanye, but I like oh. the new Kanye too. I'm just yeah, all around good. Kanye, man. Okay. All around, all around. <laughs> Give me old Kanye. All right, so who is your favorite superhero and why? Superheroes got to be Iron Man, I would say. And I wow. don't know why, honestly. Oh, I, we can think of a thousand reasons. He's sarcastic. He's he's rich. He's you, you know he's, a tech, he's super tech, super smart. Very you know, smart. maybe these are all subconscious things. But yeah, yeah, it, those things help a superhero be likable. I'm sure by the ladies. All right, <laughs> since every good superhero needs their own theme music, what would your theme song be? My theme song would be. How about that bitch? Turn my swag, swag on. on. Oh, <laughs> look in the mirror and say, what's up? What's up? <laughs> yeah. Hey, I like yeah. that. That's Soldier Boy, ain't it? That's Soldier Boy, ain't yeah. it, KT? Yeah, yeah. Soldier yeah. Boy. Yeah. yeah. All right, so normally right here, I ask you if you could shadow anyone for a week and learn from them and why, but I'm going to skip all that. What you probably don't know, B. Jones, do you know who her mentor was? Mm, he, he no, I don't. next alum. No way! Oh, um, oh, why? Oh, Starts with the M. Starts with the M. Starts with the M. Bro, I, I'm under the pressure now. You, y'all, y'all put me on the camera, and I don't know why. <laughs> hey, two, two, two M's. Two I don't know. M's. I can't think of the name, man. I want to say Megan. Molly. Megan. Oh, McEwen. McEwen. Yeah. Yes. Megan McEwen. Yeah. Megan McEwen is your role model. Oh man, I was thinking somebody. I was thinking about the volleyball player from uh from Northwestern, who's in Emily. E em Emily is the one I was thinking of. Em Emin. That's pretty dope. McEwen's make nuggets with Big Ten. She's awesome. We have the same talent coach in Jill Montgomery. Who? Oh my God! I mean, talk about like role model. I would trust her with my life. She tells me to like run through a wall. I'm doing that. But that's how I got to meet Megan. Megan used to watch like my little. BTN student U games when I was still a student and I was calling them by myself in the COVID closet and I'd hop on saying, you know, it's Alexis Ayala, AKA big Lexi riding solo dolo. And Megan just loved me from that moment. So when she found out I got Jill as my coach, she actually reached out to me and wanted to get breakfast with me. And I was dying. I'm telling my dad, like, Oh my God, you know, like Megan McEwen wants to get breakfast with me. And she's just been awesome. Like we we talk, and she's super supportive. Always got good advice. She's just a great person. All right. So, what is something that basketball has taught you that you can use when you're not on the court? Basketball has taught me everything. Like when I say ball is life, like I don't say that as the cliche. Like ball is really life. I feel like anything you learn in basketball, you can translate to real life about being a good person, as from coming from being a good teammate. Um, 
just the love that you create with the people that you surround yourself with, trust, and, you know, compassion for what other people are going through off the court, bringing it onto the court. And, and, and my favorite part about basketball is just that it taught me that it's like my safe place. Like no matter what's going on, basketball is always there for me. And that thing that I can go to, to just let all the other stuff go. And basketball ain't judgmental. You know what I mean? It, it demands a lot, but it don't judge you. Whether you fail or you win, whatever, it, it allows you room for grace. I, I like that part about basketball as well. We'll always be there. No matter how many times you lose, how many times you miss, it's always right there, ready to keep working with you. All right, so we're going to produce a movie that's centered around you. The one thing we're missing is a lead actress. Who should we get to play you in the story of your life? You know, I would have to have to go with Margot Robbie, Miss Barbie. <laughs> right? I can see it. I can see it. Uh, Kevin, we want to uh, we want to go to the bank and get a loan uh, to get to get Margot Robbie uh, on the set. But uh, I don't think it. my credit that good for us to get a loan that big, man. But we can try. <laughs> hey, you know who we I had, KT? KT, you gonna be proud okay. of me on this one. I had Supergirl. I think her name is like Melissa something. Melissa, Melissa uh, Ben. Tw yes, Noise or something yes, like yes, that. Like, uh, yes. that that's that's who I had. I had Supergirl as that's uh, what I had that. for her superhero. Really? In my head, it was Supergirl. She has a Supergirl look. She do. She oh. do have a Supergirl look. But, but who, who do you have? Who do you have as the actress, KT? Oh, I I was going with Margo and <laughs> whoever y'all got on this one. <laughs> I, 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 I can be Margo. We gonna go with Margo. Let's go big and go home, KT. Margo, yeah. because you know she she's Barbie, but she's also Harley Quinn, and I just feel like the duality of yes, it. yes, she she she's pretty cold. She a rock. Hey, yeah, if she's not in the if she's not at the top right now, I don't know who is. I just right. wish they had treated her character better. The Harley Quinn should have been so much better. She was really good. She was All so right, good. so this is probably the most important question I'm going to ask you during this initiation. Okay. B. Jones and I, we love to travel. and we travel, we got to eat. So we come down there to hang out with you. What's that one food spot you're going to recommend and what's your go-to meal there? I'm going to pick my East Lansing spot because that's where I go to the most when I'm always working over there. Barrio. Honestly, and it sounds bad because I know they're a chain. I'm Mexican and I'm not going with authentic Mexican, but Barrio just slaps every time. Like you, you get the green goddess where it's like the double decker and the guac is making them stick together and, and you fill out everything you want. And like, they just, they just got the best guac in the world that that that's what sells me. And we're going to Barrio. Hey, Here's somebody from Barrio, reach we, out. We got to do no, that, no, KT. No, no. We got Marwan. Marwan Miller. You remember he's there oh, now. Oh, that's right. That's right. Marwan. Get he's up. the girl side of the assistant coach. So you already know we gonna, we good to go down there when we go. Yeah, we, we need a table of five. <laughs> no doubt. We Barrio. may be six. And I may be eating for two people. All right. So <laughs> if you hit that subscribe button or thinking about doing so, please do. Leave us your top five music artists, your theme song, and your favorite superhero in the comments. And finally, go to our website. SLTUGotNext.com to learn more about us and the other You Got Next family members like Megan McEwen. Now allow me to reintroduce our newest play cousin, Miss Alexis Ayala, or you can call her Big Lexi. So B. Jones, go ahead and take it away, brother. Big Lexi, bang, bang. Welcome to the show. I'm super excited about this one, ladies and gentlemen. We, we've been uh, we've been doing so much groundwork with with prep and high school, especially a lot of our college basketball players that uh, we, we hadn't had opportunity to talk to some of the people that that entertain us, that really help paint the picture of what's going on and what what's interacting on the court, off the court to really give us that inside uh, transparent view of the games that we absolutely love love so this is this is gonna be a fun one and uh i'm super excited about having you on the show big lexi but let's take them back to the beginning because it ain't too many times we get we get margot robbie looking like on the <laughs> set and they and they from flint michigan at that you know what i'm talking about we we going back we going back to the to the to the big mi well i know it's down it's down and gritty up there y'all y'all much a blue collar town so uh let's let's take it back tell us about growing up and when did you uh when did you fall in love with the game of basketball I grew up, um, you know, honestly, right outside of Flint in this like tiny little town. And I hated the town. I hated the town. So my dad would always take me into Flint and in Kalamazoo where he grew up and show me like the basketball scene that way. And we just play outside. And my love of the game, 100 percent, 
came from my dad. Like, I've never met anyone who loves the game as much as my dad. And being like a little kid and watching him as a young dad, just like still out there, just yamming on people, like is the coolest thing. Like, my dad's my favorite superhero is what I really should have said. He was seriously like a superhero out there. You know, I was cool just because he was my dad with all the guys up there, all the girls, you know, it was just awesome. It made me feel confident because my dad could play basketball and it made me want to play basketball and be that person that everyone thought was so cool up at the courts. So that's where my love came from, my passion, my work ethic, all the good traits about me came from my dad. Now you uh you played basketball all the way. Did you play at Michigan State or or, or tell tell us a little bit about your basketball career, your hoop your hooping pedigree? Yeah, yeah. So I went to just play at a little small school in Detroit, over by Detroit, it's in Southfield, Lawrence Tech. Super smart people school. It's like the the closest to an <laughs> Ivy League you could get. They were serious about the school there, so. I was a little nervous going into it, but it was awesome. Like I met some of the most hardest working people I've ever met in my life. They're just so dedicated to school and their sport. I played two years of ball there. And then I went to Michigan State, transferred there and started focusing on the broadcasting side of it. But I, I would be lying to you if I said j just a little part of me. I try not to regret anything, but definitely a little part of me regrets not walking on going going to Michigan State. You know, that's what my dad wanted me to do. I should, you know, should have listened to dad. They know, they know. Oh, uh, but you you still you followed your course. You 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 were obedient in a different path. But uh, now we got to go back to the moment of truth here. So six six uh six of you guys or uh, any any of any of the other family members, hoopers, brothers or sisters, are they are they uh, dope hoopers? Oh yeah, my brother. He like we'll we'll play in all the Gus Mackers and like the three on three leagues. We are like the best sibling duo out there. I don't care. We can count anybody. We can count anybody. <laughs> He's just the big man. I'm the guard. Our screen and roll, pick and pop games, crazy. He's like six nine, two hundred eighty pounds. So oh, that's a big dude. He, he a monster. Gets me open. He gets me open on them screens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So so you 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 all brought up something very interesting. Um, you said that you you went back to when you got to, to Michigan State. You at that point in time it became crystal clear that that you wanted to focus on your career you wanted to really get the broadcasting thing going what was that what was that journey like because it's funny we all see you guys on television we listen to you and, and i laugh now now that i'm behind the camera i laugh when i read the the, the people who criticize analysts and they and i'm like y'all don't have a clue how hard, like we could put a mic in front of you right now you probably just just wash all the way out you would just tremendously fail but but uh but it, but it, it's kind of cool that you started in college and kind of really knew the direction you wanted to go what was that onboarding process like or <clears throat> or should i say what was that transition process like uh picking up the microphone and really honing in on your craft yeah it was cool because at lawrence tech we kind of had like a big three but since it was such a small school it wasn't really competitive in the in the broadcast program so i was with though two really awesome people jenna rose who is also one of the bucks hosts and with the blackhawks and arena hosts you know, obviously she's doing big things, one of my best friends. And then we had Jason Ross Jr., who he's over calling, you know, the NCAA men's side of the tournament right now, March Madness. He's doing all types of big things. So it was me, Jenna, and Jason, like the big dogs of Lil Old Lord's Tech doing the broadcasting thing. And it was awesome getting to know them, two people I still love so much today. But then when I transferred to Michigan State, I felt like I was in like a movie, like I had just like stepped on the scene of New York because holy smokes, like this school is so big and there's all these, you know, people coming into class talking about, yeah, I just got done internshipping with like the PGA and I just got back from NBA Summer League and, you know, NFL training camp. And I'm like, oh my God, like, you know, I, I've just been outside pooping like <laughs> I didn't do any type of internship. so i'm like oh man i'm behind so when i got to uh michigan state i really was like okay we gotta kick it into gear everybody's grinding at michigan state i got it with some of those grinders into the programs that they were doing 
and you know networking all that good stuff it was all up from there now you mentioned a, a, a talent coach uh he, he need to, i need i'm gonna need some help from him as well but uh but but how much time do you work with a talent coach and is that is that a, a big component is that a major part of your development working with the megans and the talent coaches and practice 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 is, is that a, a big a big part of your daily uh daily you know routine and, and, and kind of how you prepare for the games major major jill montgomery of four leaf productions it's the four leaf family it's a family there too she changed my whole life like i mean seriously i'll ride with her till the day i die 100 percent. and we get together we try to do once or twice a week depending on how many games i have going on but she comes in and i swear you've never met anyone like jill i mean maybe like a, a tom izzo but she's not for the the faint the weak of heart like you got to be ready to come in and be mentally tough about what she's gonna say she she will tear you apart and i i love that though i love that i hate i hated when i was starting to get into the business and i'd reach out to people and it was like your reel's great good job you know so i'm over here thinking then you know why am i not working alongside the holly rose the andrea carter's like the like if i'm so good like, why am I not there yet? Like, I w it wasn't making sense in my head until I met Jill. <laughs> and she's like, hmm, you suck, you know. Hey. But, but you have something. But you have something. You know, You, you I see the quality <laughs> or quality, the IQ. But but we got to fix you up, honey boo. Like, we got to teach you the funny fundamentals. And she got me hit. But it's like a, a process where you'll never be a finished product. And. You can always be better. Always add another element and layer to your game. Well, we're gonna we're gonna start. We're gonna, we're gonna, yeah, Montgomery, she's the one that like the uh, she does track and stuff, right? Yeah, yep. That's what okay, she, yeah. she was in college doing that, and then she, in her broadcast career, was an analyst for that. I mean, Julian Edelman is one of her, you know, clients. She got Megan McEwen and just all types of freaking awesome big time big time people. Yeah, we we gonna have to uh, get get Jill to sign off on some T shirts that say "quotation you suck" quotation. Uh, <laughs> but, but you have something. But you have something <laughs> on the back. It's gonna say, "But you have something." You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. We we got to get them T shirts out in circulation. Now it's funny you say you have a coach because when I listen, you know, I'm I'm so glad about social media because I didn't have to go like look up a game and try to listen to a whole game to kind of get get the uh, the the picture of how you analyze and how you sound on the sideline. You got a lot of TikTok talks out there and things of that nature where we get to actually get a snip uh, a sneak peek at, at your style and you you seem like one of the one of the home girls i hate to say it so like did jill did jill say hey just go up there and be flint be yourself kind of bring that that big lexi vibe because you make it look fun you make it sound fun i'm sitting over i'm laughing at the commentary that's that's why that's why i come up with the bang bang because because in one yeah. of your videos you said the bang bang i'm like that is super dope i mean like i, I enjoy listening to you and now i'm like when, when is the next time uh uh, uh ayala calling a game so I, I can go and just enjoy that game like how much how much of that was you how much of that was jill did y'all work together and and where, where did that style come from so that's just who i am that style came from i guess part of me i feel like was just born with this crazy confidence and this just vibe the big lexi vibe but you know i got a lot of that from my dad as well from the aau basketball teams that i've been on but i came in like that with jill and she loved it that was the thing where she's like your fundamentals aren't there you're really raw. You don't know any of the broadcast rules, but you have just this thing, you know, that like can't be taught. So she never wanted that to, to go away. You know, she knew that was what was going to make me different than everybody. But we had to like definitely figure out a way to reel it in a little bit for sure in the beginning. I was out there just talking crazy on a broadcast. And there's sometimes where she's like, you can't, you know, you can't say that on a broadcast. <laughs> So I had to learn like where the line is. And sometimes I'm, you know, I'm still figuring it out. Sometimes she's like, you know, you get away with it this time, but like, you never know. Won't like that. Yeah. So it's a line, but thankfully she, she lets me be me for sure. 20 games in six days is what you said. How, how many, how many, how many games you did in that, that short period of time? Yep. 20 games in six days. And yeah. and you do all sports, so 
you literally have to become a micro expert. Now I call a micro because you know, I'm, you know, we, we, I know you can't become a, a I used to play type expert, right? We're going to, we're going to give them that mantle, but you literally become savvy enough, sharp enough to talk about football, basketball. I mean, all of the sports combined hockey. Like that yeah. is a lot of work. How, how did you pull off 20, 20 games in that short amount of time? Thankfully for me, 18 of the 20 games were basketball where I am an actual expert in. That's right. the only sport where I will say I'm an expert. I have a very high IQ in that game. But the other two games were in football, you know, micro. I like your word there, micro expert, emphasis on micro for, yeah, football, soccer, gymnastics, hockey, any sport anyone asks me to do, really, I become a micro micro <laughs> well well i know people watching this they because i always had this question when we get we get you guys on the show G give us your your craziest interview of all time who did you sit down with that you were like what the heck this is hilarious it's just you know what i mean i was not expecting this out of this individual who who, who was that interview i would honestly say probably um notre dame legendary head coach digger phelps Hey, oh. everybody know Digger Phelps. That's oh, old. yeah. Oh, yeah. Just because, you know, when I first went up to meet him off camera, like, first thing he says to me is, hey, you know, they call me Digger, but some people call me asshole. And so, <laughs> so I was like, okay, coach, all right. So I was like, okay, is he going to be kind of like, you know, that type of guy uh, on a broad, you know, on our interview in the broadcast when we're on camera, is he going to be short with me? Everyone was warning me, like, you know, he, you know, Digger's old, getting older, and you know, doesn't have as much of, you know, a fuse. So, like, get right to the point. But we got on, and we looked back at some of his most historic comebacks. He actually started crying right there on camera with me, and it was a beautiful magical emotional moment with someone that I was thinking might be a little bit like tough guy and he came in and started crying so that was just awesome and the last question I'm gonna get is 2024 that that might have been a mamba moment I hate to say that that Digger Phelps story might have been a mamba moment but is there a moment in your career where you uh well, you rose to the top. You you just had that phenomenal performance. You called the perfect game, or you called what you considered one of your best games of, and it gave you that confidence to 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 keep pushing forward. Give us that moment in your career, that Mamba moment where uh, where Big Lexi became uh, became a beast. I would say uh, more than Mamba moment. It was my Jordan flu game. I had a Jordan flu game, and it of course happened to be on the biggest game of my life. My first ever ESPN game I got uh, back in the beginning of February. I flew over to Houston. I'm calling um, Shaq's daughter's high school team. Measy, and, okay. Yes, and I get so sick. The night before the game, all night long, I'm throwing up. I'm going from, like, sweating to shivering, sweating to shivering. And it was bad. Like the worst thing in the world to me is a tummy ache. I become the biggest baby in the world. You know, I'm, I'm crying. I'm calling my dad. Like I'm as dramatic as it gets when I'm sick. So my, my talent coach, you know, I call her and she's like, listen, you know, COVID test at least make sure it's not COVID, but you know, you're going in to do the game. I was like, of course, that's no questions asked, you know, but yeah, we at least have to make sure it's not COVID. So I made sure it wasn't that. And it wasn't. So we just filled up on a bunch of vitamin C and, medicine and soup and I went in and I'm like literally swallowing down my throw up during the broadcast but I, I killed it you know my dad was listening <laughs> first nationally televised game he's like I would have never known like I would have had no idea and after the game I was still kind of feeling like you know maybe I didn't do good enough maybe people could tell that I was sick or that I was off but then you know I get a call a couple weeks later to call for ESPN again the SWAC women's basketball championship so I'm like, okay, like we pulled it off. Like we did good enough to be invited back. Hell yeah. Real quick, you've, you've worked with a lot of great people. Brian Custer, shout out to him. He's one of my favorite people to listen to. Uh, who, who would you say is one of the, 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 the of your faves, whether they were upcoming, whether they were a prominent name? Who's one of the, your most favorite people to work with uh, and, and, and call a game? 
Um, my, my favorite play by play guy is Evan Stockton. I love him. He's my main buddy, but my, my favorite person that I ever got to more like look up to and kind of shadow was Jenny Taft. I got to be on the sidelines with her at Michigan state for a Michigan state, Michigan football game. And it was actually when she was pregnant with Gigi and no one knew yet. And she like told me in the bathroom, like, you know, but don't tell anyone. So I felt like I was like in with Jenny Taff and <laughs> they got the, the upset that day and beat Michigan. I was like, this is the greatest day of my life. Like, oh my God, me and Jenny just became friends. They got the win. Let's go. <laughs> hey, let's go. That was dope, Kevin. Kevin, Kevin that was pretty smooth, bro. I, I like I like that segment. All right, here we go. <laughs> Big Lexi, welcome to the championship rounds. This is the part of the show with KT and I. We're going to do a little one-on-one, -on -one and you are now officially calling all of the shots, all right? So this is our version of Would You Rather. So Kevin and I are going to go three rounds in true championship round spirit. And uh, in each round, we're going to give you a complex option. And uh, whichever one of those options or scenarios that you select, that host will gain a point. The first host to get two points or the best out of three will win this episode's game of championship rounds. Kevin is the defending champion. So KT, let's go. Would You Rather. You said you had a high basketball IQ earlier, so I hope you go with me on this one. Would you rather become the owner of your own WNBA franchise? You can pick whatever city you want. Or, or pick whatever program, whatever team, any sport that you want. But you're going to go on and become a legendary broadcaster for that franchise or that school. And you will finish your career 30 years later as a Hall of Famer. Gosh, like it would be so cool to to own, you know, my own team. I would bring the Detroit Shock back, but I, I want to be in the Hall of Fame. I, I love broadcasting. Put me on camera. Put me on. Put me on all the games. Let's go, Michigan State. Go green. Go white. Yep. Standing in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, let's go. All right, round number. Who we'll put we I, I, I'm creating a documentary, all right, and uh, I'm gonna come up with a name up for it here in a second. But it's uh it's gonna be it's gonna be called Young Guns, okay? And this broadcast is this documentary is gonna be following you and a handful of other uh, talented individuals who are just getting their career started. We're gonna put a camera on you and we're gonna follow you in the car, on the bus rides, on the airplane, your preparation, on the sideline during the breaks. We're gonna we're gonna get to really be able to see a transparent view of what's going on in the life of a sideline reporter or color commentator or I'm giving you your own food show on TikTok where you get to travel the world interviewing athletes and celebrities and eating at some of the best places in the world yeah I, I'm, I love the food I gotta go with the food oh. you no know, I can't have someone following me around everywhere like I said Jill has to pull me back sometimes I can't have the <laughs> camera in my face all the time. I'm gonna slip up at some point. I'm gonna say something. <laughs> Even if I put it on Netflix. <laughs> all right. Going with the food. <sighs> all right. So get ready to step into the sneaker arena where every shoe tells a story. The only story that B. Jones and I care about is who wins this episode's game of championship rounds. So before the show, B. Jones and I looked into our collections. We picked a pair of shoes that we felt Lexi would rock. So, Lex, I'm going to count down from three. And when I do so, I need for you to say, hold that sneaker. And we're going to show you what we brought today, okay? Oh, cool. Okay. All right. Three, two, one. Hold that sneaker. Let's see it. <laughs> yeah, Whoa. I saw you. Yeah, she had those. You joker. <laughs> I literally have those shoes. Yeah, yeah, I know. I saw those too. I knew he had them. So I had to try to bring out something to go against them. Right. You know, like that. I don't know how to. That's so hard. Like, I literally have those shoes, but like, I would love to have those those shoes. Hey, it's your choice. Your like call. I have to go with those because, like, I, I already have these and now I want. Oh. <laughs> Oh. I'm sorry. Oh, that 
That was such a hard one. I'm like, I, I did know. my research. It, yeah, it I saw me. that too. I said she had those shoes. I'm like, God, I got to go with these other ones. Don't worry, I can be. But, but, but KT, she got the pair of the Florida State ones. She she had the uh the, the maroon and the the beige ones as well. I figured you were gonna go with those. That's why I went. Oh my goodness. I know. I feel so bad that because I have those, so I'm like. Nah, you, you. Did, you did okay. You but, did. But right. you made, you made, you the new shoes that I don't have yet, you know, you want what you can't have. Like, I don't have those. I, I should the second time today. I should have went with my heart. I had some Michigan State one set up, and I, I didn't. Go, I, I know I, I didn't go. I didn't go with them. I said she's got these shoes, so it's gonna be tough. Okay, to put on. I've, heard, I've heard enough of you. This is my time, <sighs> time buddy. Uh, you, you, you talking to her my time, <sighs> Lexi? Thank you so much for picking me. I, I'm I'm just happy seeing him in pain. I'm in pain. Yeah. That makes You're me welcome. feel great. Uh, right. I'm, I'm still a champion, man. I see you still, Jerry. Uh, yeah. Y'all, uh, y'all wish I, I, I'm, I'm big Lexi over here. They're going to have to censor me what I'm about to say uh, to them about that belt. All right, but here we go, big Lexi. The, the title of the show is You Got Next. We talked about your past. I don't even think we talked a little uh, enough about what you got going on right now. But of course, in, in the 40 minute show, we can only go through so much. But we got to leave them inspired. We got to leave them motivated and tell them, you know, what the future holds. So, what are you most excited about in your career? What is, what is big Lexi? looking forward to as uh, as you continue your your professional career man big lexi is looking forward to next basketball season like i am so heartbroken that it's march and i'm trying i've been trying to mentally prepare myself the season was coming to an end you know it's time to relax recenter hopefully get some good espn games for some big aau tournaments this summer but um yeah, you know, it's just going to be me continuing to grind. I'm making a new reel right now with my talent coach. We're going to get that set out to everybody and their moms. And, you know, hopefully more and more people start liking me and bringing me on. And I'll have a consistent spot with ESPN soon. That's that's the plan. Well, you're always welcome on Sports Life Talk. Like I said, hey, I, got, no I got an idea for a three-way show that we can go to. I'm just letting you know. All right, so do you have any shout-outs you want to give? Shout out my dad for, you know, just making me, I feel like a good human who's, who's fun to talk to um, and loves basketball. And the rest of my family, you know, I, I grind so hard because I'm the biggest sister of six. So I want to be a role model to them and my, my sisters, my brother. Shout out my talent coach, Jill. Shout out Megan McEwen um for being a mentor and shout out you two for having me on here i appreciate y'all yeah i i love the shout out to us but you sure rubbed it in with the because i'm the oldest of six you you, you had to make sure you, you <laughs> got <it> in. <laughs> i take the big sister role very seriously hey, you know, no 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 cap I, I i love it i love it i do all right so, all right, so this is the part of the show where you get a chance to call the person that you think should have next Tell me, hey, I got a chance to rock with B. Jones and KT. I told them my story. I want you to do the same thing. With that said, Lexi, who are you calling out? Who should have next? My guy, Evan Stockton. My, I mentioned him. He's my favorite play-by-play to work I know with. Evan Stockton. Yeah, I see, I've seen him work before, so I'm all about that one. Evan Stockton, you are officially on the clock. Let the world know that you are up next. Your ticket just got punched, and we are super excited, and we want to officially invite you to get on the show and tell everybody about your amazing journey. But Big Lexi, Alexis, Ayala, you got Next, you are the truth. You are a trailblazer. You are an icon. You are a shooting star. You are a future phenom. You are extraordinary and elite. You deserve a yeet. Oh, my God. Back at it again. Hey, I love KT, this was a great show. I don't know how we was able to squeeze Margot Robbie as well as Tom Izzo and Jill Montgomery all in the same 45-minute window. But we pulled it off today, ladies and gentlemen. So thank you all for watching another episode of Sports Life Talks you got next. We appreciate the love. We appreciate all the good vibrations. This is your moment to become the MVP of this show and do one of those SLT training. That's right, the big three. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button. We locked in. We're going to give y'all probably over 
200 episodes this year. And make sure you hit that like button. Send us all your people. And, and then also tap in with us at Sports Life Talk because we do. We go to events. We got a big crazy summer plan. We're going to be all over the country at AAU tournaments. So you're going to get some unprecedented content. There's going to be some inside looks. I promise you, you're going to have a good time. And if you want to be on the show, go to our website, sltugotnext.com. Kevin and I can't find everybody. Kevin got blessed with this one. But if you got a story and you know you a mama, hit us up on our website. Click on the nominate tab. Tell us a little bit about yourself. We're going to reach out and give you an audition to be on the show. We go live every Wednesday night at 8 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. Hey, it's about connecting the community, creating a conversation, and, and just cultivating. We, we would love to have you along part of that. And lastly, take You Got Next on the road. We do all of our shows in audio format. Whether you're in the car, whether you're in the kitchen, whether you're in the gym, it don't matter. You can take the smooth, some sultry sounds of the mouth of the South B. Jones and head coach KT and uh, anywhere you download your official podcast. KT, let's go home, man. You want to say congr- congratulate me on my win again, B. Jones? You I will do? not. I will not oh, be saying that. Don't be a hater. Don't be a hater. <sighs> I knew, I knew he wasn't, Lexi. I just went for it. All right, uh, Lexi, thank you so much for rocking with us. Whatever you need from us, please let us know. We got your back. Appreciate you. I got your host. Hey, Lexi, there's only one thing left to do. You know what that is, right? What is it? I wake up out the bed, get my swag on. Oh, yeah. Take a look in the and mirror, say, what's up? What's up? What's up? Yeah. Yay, I'm getting money. <laughs> ah. Sports Life Talk Nation, we love y'all. Stay safe. Be blessed. Respect each other and love one another because together we are better. And keep dreaming big because you never know. Your story may be the next one featured on Sports Life Talks. You got it. Next! Yeet! I knew you had next, cause you always working, you always grinding, you're in your bag, cause you're always working, like, in due time, I just, I knew you got next. Oh, you did it, huh? Crack the code. You got next, you smashing goals. You want next, you need exposure. Well, sports like talk, got the baddest show, like the baddest hut in the room. Podcast is tuning to just for you to talk your shit. Talk your mushroom, you want what you eat and you should consume. Sports like talk from the late night to the afternoon, then rest repeat. Hit the like, leave a comment, or subscribe so you don't miss a beat. You got next, it's a small taste of a winning meal from a chef type of celebrity. What's up next is you, at least you better be. Yeah. You got next, yeah. I can feel it. Just like me, you got next, and what comes next? Tune in next time, and you'll see. Cause if you got next, yeah, if you got next, if you got next, then you're just like me. If you got next, if you got next, yeah, if you got next, then you know where to be. I'm talking sports, life, talking this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sports, life, talking this.